How's it going guys? Today it's going to be a different type of video. Uh, I wanted to kind of show the basics of what FSD really can do. It's kind of impressive and I'm really excited to show you what it can do. For those of you that don't know what FSD is, that stands for full self driving. Now it's not completely fully autonomous, but it's freaking close. Um, I have the 2023 Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive, which means that I don't have any ultrasonic sensors. So that's why it's super impressive. This is a camera based car. We got a couple cameras up here couple on the pillars on each side you got the blind spot cameras and then the rear uh, camera in the back as well that's it and the full self-driving computer is able to completely drive the car with a total of I think six to ten cameras it's it's insane and I have to show you exactly what this can do but before we start today's video I want to thank this person right here for actually going and purchasing a Tesla Model 3 congratulations with my referral code what that means is if you purchase with my referral code, you get full self-driving, just like I do, for three months. So him and I are both trying out FSD for three months for free. Now stick around in today's video as I do have a really cool sponsor with a giveaway in today's video. So stick around, I'm going to teach you guys exactly how to participate in the giveaway and things like that. But with further ado, let's go and we're going to start driving. I'm going to kind of explain everything, show you guys the features on the screen as we go through the, you know, through the drive. We're going for like a 16 minute drive and my goal is to not touch the steering wheel that much besides the time where I want you to just tell the car that you're still here. It's not fully autonomous, but it's very close. So my goal is to never let it, uh, my goal is to never correct its driving and just go for it. So let's try it out. As you start moving, we're going to actually just drive it to the street and then from there I'll have it drive through the neighborhood first. I'm going to take a left here instead of a right. I'll take a left through the neighborhood and just let it take over from there so you can see what it's like in slow residential streets. Um, autopilot was able to follow the curves of the road, not stop at a stop sign or pedestrians really. This is full self-driving which allows you to, you know, just relax in the car while it does its thing. Now it is turning its turn signal on a on a curve right here that isn't really needed to happen, but it's it is a beta, but it's a really cool beta. It's, it's the I mean there's not many cars out here that can fully self-drive like this. We're stopping at the stop sign right here. It's gonna creep forward for visibility. And actually one thing I'm gonna do here is you could swipe your screen. Um hold on. <laughs> Alright, here we go. You can swipe your screen and show the full detailed computer image and show it shows us exactly what the car is doing at this moment, which is stop for the si stop sign and now creeping forward for visibility. <laughs> and then it's gonna, it also shows like both lanes of traffic and makes an imaginary line on the road as well. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but we don't have any yellow dividers in the road, but it made one itself because it, it, it realizes that it needs to be a, a certain distance away from the oncoming traffic. It shows parked cars in a parking lot. Um, it even shows this guy riding the bike right over here as well, uh, which actually he's, he's riding a Jetson electric bike, which I do actually own. I have not made a video about that one too much besides the fact that it was fitting in my trunk. Um, but it definitely is a really cool electric bike. Uh, comment down below if you guys want to see more electric bike videos because I have a couple more planned. Um, so yeah, we're doing really good. Again, I have yet to touch steering wheel. It does want me to kind of just nudge it once in a while just to let my, uh, let the car know I'm paying attention. Uh, but besides that, it's, it's doing a really great job just getting out of the neighborhood and going to its first traffic light right here or it's gonna have to increase its speed now what I really feel like I'm doing right now is being a driving instructor for a new driver because it, it feels like that it's a little choppy at times there's times where when slowing down it kind of slows down too fast or when speeding up like right now it speeds up a little slow so it's it's almost like I'm a driving instructor for a robot it's it's kind of crazy but as we continue going forward, um, it's it's doing really great. It's watching for traffic, all lanes of traffic, oncoming, behind me, in front of me. And as we get to an intersection, you're going to see, not only is it going to tell you it's stopping for the traffic light, hopefully, <laughs> but it's also going to show you the whole intersection by zooming out right here. 
and showing you all lanes of traffic and what these guys are all doing. Let's say this truck over here gets broken down in the in the middle of the intersection, it would maneuver and, and it'll have like a little prediction app where it'll maneuver around the truck when it if it broke down. But as we continue going, it is green. Um, I'd say the one thing I don't like about it, my camera just died, I'm so sorry. I got a new battery in it. Anyways, what I was saying was, one thing I really don't like about this uh, full self driving, which will get improved over time, is that it, it does kind of move pretty slow without you putting some human input into it. Um, so what I mean by that is, yes, we're at the speed limit of 55, which is totally okay. In real world scenarios, people don't go speed limit majority of the time and I really wish it had about a five mile an hour kind of auto change of going either faster or slower depending on the situation but I get it that it's because of safety but right now I have people behind me that are kind of tailgating me so that's where you would actually have to put in some you know human command and, and scroll up the squirrel wheel to like 60 miles an hour that way we're going a little quicker and people don't get pissed off at me but it's doing really good it's a one lane road on either end and it's kind of windy so this is a good test uh, a couple different speed limit changes are going to happen we're going to go from 55 to 40 uh, so that's going to happen pretty quickly we'll see how it adjusts to that especially with cars behind us as well Another cool thing it just did there as well was a semi was on the left oncoming traffic lane and it actually knows if it's in the center of the lane, the left side of the lane, or the right side. And what a human would typically do would be a, go a little bit more to the right to be able to avoid that semi to give it some more space. And it actually did that just with no problem. So it was, that was something new that came in the latest software update that allows you to go multiple different areas without any problem at all. So that was awesome, really love that as well. All right, today's video is sponsored by Magback and I can't tell you how excited I am to show you guys the products that they make as it's just one of the best products I've ever had for the Tesla. Simplicity is literally the key part of owning a Tesla and I needed a phone mount that's gonna be simple. That's not gonna have me needing to press eject to get the phone from unclamping. I just personally find a lot of phone mounts out there being ugly where they clamp and unclamp and it's just not as simple as it would be if it was such as magnetic. Magback makes a wireless phone charging mount for your Tesla. This is unbelievable. It's one of the best products I've ever had. I've tried it for the last month and a half and the reason why it took me that long is because I've had a lot of phone mounts break after about a month of use. So I wanted to actually give a proper review of this product and make sure it's something I'm gonna be passionate into actually having you guys try. And I gotta say, it is it's phenomenal so not only do you get a phone mount you also would have to get a phone case as well now a lot of you guys might be like well I love my phone case this and that I can't tell you how amazing this phone case is so I started with a Galaxy S22 plus which was already a bigger phone but then later on upgraded my phone to be an even bigger phone which is the Galaxy S22 Ultra so they were kind of enough to send me both phone cases to kind of do a review on to showcase what a smaller phone would look like and a bigger phone and you know this one weighing more than this one I was kind of concerned of is the magnetic backing going to be strong enough to hold a heavier phone opposed to a lighter phone it's great it just simply mounts onto the back of the screen and the little wire just can easily go into the trim of the vehicle running right into the middle console for fast charging after that it's wirelessly charging your phone and you're good I can't thank Magback enough for sponsoring today's video as this product is just phenomenal. I love it. Now, not only was the company awesome to send me two phone cases, they also are going to have something for you guys to participate as well in. All of these products right here. Now, this right here is what you call rim case. So not only do they make phone cases, they make cases for your rims as well. I am going to be giving this away to one of you guys and what this is, is it allows you to protect your rims, but also giving it a nice aesthetic 
design. It comes with four of them. So you would put this right onto your rims and voila, you're done. It's super simple. When you put this on your rims, if you were to get curb rash, things like that, these are easy to get removed and you just protected your rims from, you know, costing a fortune to get repaired or even replaced. Magback has sponsored today's video to be able to give you guys one of these today. In order to participate in today's giveaway, just a few things I do require having to happen. One, subscribe to the channel and drop a like down below. I want you guys to be able to, you know, support the channel and show some support into my creations. Two, comment down below what your favorite video of mine is and why you want this product. And then finally, three, go follow my X or Twitter, whatever it used to be called. Go follow that down below and show some love to that account as well. After you've done all three steps, then just go ahead and uh, just be patient. Hopefully I choose you. I don't have that big of an audience, so whoever comments down below is going to have a really high chance of winning. This product is made for the Tesla Model Y only, so if you don't have the Tesla Model Y, then unfortunately these will not be good for you. It's going to be for the 20 inch induction wheels. So if you have the Tesla Model Y 20 inch induction wheels and you would like to participate in the giveaway, comment down below. I would love to choose one of you guys. I'll be announcing the giveaway winner within the next month or two, probably by holiday. So definitely stay tuned more videos are to come and uh let's get back to the fsd we're getting to a railroad crossing which on basic autopilot would typically freak out and not know if it's a traffic light but with it being autopilot here it's going to hopefully slow down uh because this guy's actually going to be making a left turn we passed the railroad track and now we're waiting for this guy to get the right away to make its left turn and as you can see we made a complete stop and fortunately we did make a complete stop on the railroad tracks which is you know a good thing <laughs> but he's still waiting for oncoming traffic to get out of his way and then the car yeah i can already feel it the car is picking it up and keeping a safe distance as you saw from that truck that's coming on right now so now we min we uh continue going straight and that was a good test right there letting the car it kept a good distance between us and the car in front of us and as you can see it flashed blue because it also is using the cavern camera so if you're not looking at the road or not touching the steering wheel for a little bit of time it will indeed flash at you this and say hey pay attention to the road and we're still in beta like i said before it's not fully autonomous it's close but it's not there yet So now we're coming up at another traffic light. We got a couple cars shooting out uh, across two lanes of traffic. It's doing really good. It's watching those cars. If you look over here, that car was creeping up. It didn't slam on the brakes like I've seen other FSD betas in the past do. So it's doing a really good job. It's being pretty brave. As we're at another traffic light, I want you to keep in mind, we got about three cars in front of me um, at this traffic light, but it's still able to see the uh, car is going across the intersection just fine. Uh, it probably sees more cars. It's paying attention to more cars than I humanly possibly can, which is just crazy to me. It's, it's awesome to see this type of, uh, you know, type of technology working, you know. All right, we're going and we're crossing the intersection right now. It's got a whole bunch of like imaginary lines to kind of give the car an idea of where to go if something bad were to happen. Super cool to see that happening in real time. This guy's gonna go right in front of us. We're merging into from a two lane to a one lane road again. And it even shows the turn signal on the computer image for when that car is turning. One of the situations again where nobody goes the speed limit here so I have to manually adjust the speed to where I at least follow the flow of traffic. That's something I do wish can come in a future update, automatically go with the flow of traffic to an, an extent, you know, but then like I say, the five, 10 mile variant of, of how much slower or faster the actual speed limit would be, just because I, I, only robots do that. Same thing goes, it used to have a creep feature where it would creep uh, pass or what they, they call a California stop at a stop sign. It doesn't do that anymore. It completely makes a, a hard stop at a stop sign um, due to legal reasons. But 
there's got to be settings out there that would have us agree to the robot doing something like that. This was a good test right here. There was no lines on the road and a hill to block the view of where the line, uh, the lane would be, and it predicted it very smoothly. I felt it jerk a little bit to the right, but and then it saw its lines and it it kind of reduced the. It made it very smooth. Like I said, we're getting close to ending this video here. I just wanted to kind of show you guys how how cool this is. We're going to the neighborhood and that's where I'll end the video. But as you can see, this is just a basic shot. I'm gonna get the next video of full self-driving to have multiple camera angles. But I wanted someone who's an actual consumer of Tesla and not someone who works for Tesla to kind of show you how it really is. I just am making, oh, I forgot. It's gonna be making that turn here. Did really good to put its turn signal on and not slam on the brakes right behind the people. All right, we have a very interesting turn to get into this neighborhood. It's a very busy intersection where a lot of people do tend to run this yellow light. So I'm hoping that the Tesla is not gonna just slam on the accelerator and just be patient because we also have two lanes of oncoming traffic to our left as well. So this is gonna be a good test right here. All right, I would wait, wait, okay, it's waiting. Fortunately, I don't have anyone behind me because if I was driving, I would have slammed on it right there. But I'd rather it just be patient and go when it feels comfortable. So it did wait for all those. Yep, it's going for it. So it did unfortunately uh, wait for all that traffic, but it wasn't the end of the world. So as you can see, we're in the neighborhood now. It's going about 25, which is I don't mind the 25 mile an hour speed limit when in the neighborhood because of obvious reasons. It's a lot more active over here and I'd rather, you know, have a good amount of time to respond if something were to go wrong. But as you can see, this whole uh, eight mile drive I just did now, I did not touch the steering wheel once besides just letting it know it's here. I never drove. This whole ride, I did not drive. I didn't press on the accelerator. I didn't press on the brake. I just let it do its thing. And some of you might think that's just crazy. Why would you ever trust a computer? Computers can glitch. But you know what? Eh. I'd rather, you know, be the test dummy and try it out because I think it's cool. I like new technology.